That being said, it's so good to have Brother Victor Jackson to come and minister the Word of God on our last day with him. Come on, brother. We love him. Got the chance to get to know him and love him even more. Oh, can you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Amen. If we could all stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. And uh, I tell you what, God has done some special things uh, over the last two, three days. Uh, just a great hunger and thirst after God. Uh, wonderful people of the Lord. And uh, I just commend your response and your hunger. And uh, just had a wonderful time of fellowship. Appreciate so much Pastor Delgado and his wife and family. Can you give them a hand clap of appreciation? Appreciate so much their apostolic leadership and uh, their commitment uh, to the Lord and to the principles of the faith and the tenets of the faith and I give honor to them for that special people that you have leading you. Amen. 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 And uh, I'm just what a privilege for me to be able to stand before you uh, once again on a Sunday morning. Been looking forward to being here uh, we probably booked this date eight months ago. I don't know. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Actually, it might have been longer than that. <laughs> but uh, I've warded off the buzzards trying to steal that date. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because I do feel of the Lord uh, to be here this morning and uh just excited to get into it uh why don't we open up our bibles to the gospel of john chapter 11 the gospel of john chapter 11 and verse 38 and um i told them told them last night that God has been stretching me and uh, pulling me, and uh, that's always uncomfortable. And uh, but I'm so thankful for it. So thankful to grow in His presence. John chapter eleven and. Verse 38, if you have it, say amen. amen. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. And it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Last scripture, verse 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Mm -hmm. 
I, I want to preach on this subject this morning, and uh, I don't know how far I'll get with this, but I want to preach on this subject. You will not die in this cave. You will not die in this cave. Why don't you lay your Bibles down, everyone? Close your eyes and lift up your hands. And let's ask the Lord to do exactly what he wants to do here. Lord Jesus, I feel your anointing upon me this morning. I trust in your spirit. I trust in your word. Let the gift of revelation and understanding be in operation. Let people be blessed, God. Let people be touched. Pour out your spirit in a mighty way. Let there be a demonstration of your power and of your glory. May we never be the same. We trust you with everything in us. We trust you that you're going to make a way for us where there seems to be no way. We trust you that you're going to do something special in this place this morning. In Jesus' name. Can you clap your hands unto the Lord? Come on, if you have expectation, can you clap those hands unto the Lord? Come on, if you're really excited, the Bible says clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on. Somebody lift up your voice in this place. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Appreciate the worship team, the singers, the musicians. Can you give them a hand clap of appreciation? You will not die in this cave. Man, I felt some fear lift off of some people just now. You will not die in this condition. Where you are now in your life, in your situation, in your circumstance is not the end game. You will not be remembered by the situation that you're in right now. But you will be remembered by the glory that comes out of that situation that you're in right now. You will not die in this cave. The Bible says that Lazarus was sick. And of course, when there is a sickness, when there is a battle when there is a situation that you yourself cannot get out of. You look for help uh, beyond yourself. So physicians, people that were masters of helping people come out of a situation were sent to help this man that had been sick. And nobody could help this man's condition. Uh, the counselors couldn't help him in this condition. The prescription pills could not help him in this condition. Relationships or friendships could not alleviate the sickness that had gripped his body. Nobody could help him where he was. And you know how it is. You try everything before you try Jesus. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Whew, come on, somebody. 
you try several things before your condition finally pushes you to help from the master you try relationships you try friendships you try motivational speeches and motivational books you try youtube videos you try personal development but still sickness has gripped you and finally you call on your knees and say i realize nothing else can help me i need god to come down in my situation and do something in me and my family Oh, somebody's there right now. Hallelujah. When you've tried everything you can try, and like the woman with the issue of blood, she tried everything, but she was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Come on, somebody. When you're still trying all types of stuff, the Bible says that woman spent all that she had on physicians and couldn't help her. Finally, after the last coin dropped into the doctor's wallet, she said, just give me Jesus. <laughs> just give me Jesus. Uh, matter of fact, I should have came to him sooner. I would have had more money if I'd have came to him a little bit sooner. I'd have had a little bit more peace uh, quicker if I'd have came to him sooner. I'd have had a little bit more joy than I have right now if I just would have came to him first. Come on. You got to make up your mind to not make God your last resort, uh, but let him be your first response. Uh, I am going to Jesus uh, because he can help me in the condition I'm in. Oh, somebody clap your hands if you believe that. I'm helping somebody already. Uh, he, he's sick and nobody can help him. And he's sick and uh, this family already has a connection to Jesus. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh, when Jesus would come through Bethany, he would always stop in Lazarus' home. He felt comfortable visiting and having a relationship with this family. And finally, after the situation so bad and nobody else could help them, they went to Jesus. Uh, and Martha begins to cry, hey, uh, you know that person you love? <laughs> Jesus is like, yeah, he's sick. You love him, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you shouldn't let him die, right? Because me and you have a relationship, Jesus. And you're supposed to protect my family. And you're supposed to protect my stuff. So if you love them, you better do something. And Jesus has the audacity to say, you know what? You know, this sickness isn't unto death. Well, I remind you, he died. Have you ever received the word that everything's going to be okay and things are getting worse while people are telling you that it's going to be okay? But he's not looking at the condition as it is right now. He's looking at what's going to happen in the future. And he may be dead now, but all I got to give is a word. And that word can grab him out of that. This sickness is not unto death, but it's going to be uh, for the glory of God. And, and I, it, that's a mystery to me that a, affliction could happen to somebody that's so close to Jesus. Huh? That pain could happen to somebody huh? that has a relationship with Jesus. Somebody that worships on Sunday. Huh? Somebody that runs the aisles. Somebody that prays. Huh? Somebody that tries their best to live for God. Still trouble huh? can come and 
to the life of an individual uh, that is close with God. Uh, your trial is not a reflection of your lack of relationship with God. Uh, your trial, you have been trusted uh, with that trial. Come on, somebody. Uh, just because you're going through a storm, uh, that doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. Uh, God didn't trust the people. Uh, He entrusts people that he loves with pain. Help me, Holy Ghost. And you're going through your pain right now wondering what, what uh, me and God must not be right. And people looking at you like, what did you do wrong? But yo, affliction is not because you're on the wrong track. So, so some of y'all said to yourself, man, I should have stayed in the world. I felt like I had, I was, had more peace in the world. But as soon as I made a decision to serve the Lord, all hell is broken loose against me and my family. As soon as I made a fresh consecration, can I tell you why it happens like that? The devil doesn't fight you in the world because he already has you. But when you come into the church and you say enough is enough, devil, me and my house are going to serve the Lord. That's when hell sends all of his demons to try to come into your house. But you just hold on. There's going to be glory. There's going to be anointing. There's going to be power. There's going to be something that comes out of this affliction. It's going to make the devil wish that he never touched your stuff. I wish I had a witness in this place. If you hear what I'm preaching, you need to clap right now. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to people that have been discouraged by the trial. Uh, you can handle the trial if it lasted a few weeks, but I'm preaching to people that's been in a storm cloud for months and months and months. And come on, somebody. And something bad keeps on happening. If it was just one thing, I could overcome it. That when the devil keeps on resisting and storms keep on coming, I lose my strength. And it's like the Israelites when they were afflicted by faith. The Bible says they couldn't receive the word that Moses gave them because of their anguish of spirit. They were so down when the preacher began to prophesy. They could not open up their spirit because they had been down for 400 years. Come on, somebody. But whenever they opened up, come on, God will take you quicker. God will take you out of that trial quicker than you went in if you can trust in his word. Anguish, anguish of spirit. That's where you are right now. You've been in anguish of spirit. How many, you're like, man, how many more? Uh, you know you're frustrated when you receive more prophetic words for your life uh, and hell keeps on fighting. <laughs> you're like, man, I'm waiting for one of those words to be fulfilled right now. Just give me one, Lord. I got 20 of them that's been spoken to me. Just give me one, Jesus. I, give me some hope. Hallelujah. You know you're in anguish of spirit whenever you receive an encouraging word and you just get more frustrated. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Because uh, I've been here for a while. Me and my family's been in this for a while. We've been battling for a while. And every time I feel like I got victory, something else pops up. And I don't understand that God, God uh, would allow pain to come in my life whenever I'm trying my best uh, to serve him and love him. Uh, but John said, Jesus loved uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. John put that in the text to show us uh, that his love may have brought Lazarus into his trial. Uh, but his love would 
also bring Lazarus out of his trial. And the love of God will not take you into what it does not intend to bring you out of. So if God has trusted you with some pain, you better trust him that you're coming out of it. And when you come out, you're going to come out better than you went in. You're going to come out with power. You're going to come out with joy. You're going to come out with peace. You're going to come out in a way that you never would have before. Uh, Mary, he uh, uh, loved him. He, he wanted to make sure you got that before he detailed his affliction. He loves him. And he brings peace to the reader. Okay, everything's going to work out. He loves me. He loves me. He wanted, John wanted to make sure he put that before he detailed the pain and the resistance. Now, y'all just remember now, uh, Jesus loved him. And after he details and says that Jesus loved him, the Bible says uh, that when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed two days in the same place. Uh, that, that offends me a little bit. Uh, sometimes the lack of urgency that God shows. Can almost make me bitter. Come on somebody. Uh, you love me right? You're supposed to run to me. Uh, and if you're not going to run, can you at least walk? Uh, but, but Jesus just hears it. Uh -huh, it's going to work out. And continues his other conversations like nothing happened. It's going to work out. Yeah, so tell me what's. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. And they're like, you know, Lazarus is, is like dying, right? Oh, it'll be okay. But yeah, tell them, tell them about your family. How's everything going? Mm. Mm. Before my trial turns around, God makes sure he turns me around. Because you could not handle what I'm wanting to do with that attitude you have right now. So let me keep you in this trial a little longer until you get right. And when you get right, I'll make the circumstance get right. Because if I deliver you too quickly, you're going to pat yourself on the back like you were so smart. So I'm going to keep you there long enough until the flesh has no choice but to yield to what I want to do so I can get glory. Uh, I told somebody, I told somebody, you know, God has a well for your will. Jonah! I got a well for your will. And I will keep you in the well long enough until my will becomes your will. He went into the well with his will, but he came out of the well with God's will. How long do you have to stay in trouble before you finally subject your emotions, your ambitions, your will? To his will. And he stayed in the belly of hell until he finally got on his knees in the belly of hell. He got on his knees in the belly of hell. And in the belly of hell, the Bible says he turned toward the temple to pray. How do you have direction? 
when you're beneath all that stuff and you're in the ocean and you don't know where the well is gone but still something in his spirit pulled him into prayer and into dependence and he said God I submit I don't know where I am right now I don't know what you're doing but I get on my knees and submit to whatever you want to do if I'm helping you can you clap your hands right now if I'm helping you can somebody cry out from the belly of hell and lift up hey come on to the boho shit he make a tire I'm a sabaha oh I'm a shebebe katabahaya hallelujah 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 God says, if I deliver you too quickly, you're going to take the credit. So I'm going to keep you there long enough until I make sure I get the glory. Because that's the whole reason why you're in it. Satan's trying to use your trial to destroy you, but I am using it to make you into my image. I am using it to make you into what I want you to be. And the Bible says that when Jesus finally came, Lazarus had been in the grave four days already. By the time he comes, the damage has already been done. Uh, Help me, Holy Ghost. But when Jesus comes on the scene, they've already put me into a cave. Because when man feels like he can't help me, and when man looks at my condition and they feel like God can't help me, they push me into a little dark place. And they scooted me into a a cave of darkness and said, God's done with me. They abandoned me. And I've been coming to church for six months and I'm still struggling with the same issues and they feel like uh, God hasn't helped me yet and they feel like they can't help me so they just isolate me and put me into a little cave of darkness and say just shut the door come on put the stone on them. God it can't do anything with that vessel. The damage has already been done. They've been divorced. The damage has already been done. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, they, 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 they failed. They've made some mistakes. They've been in some relationships. They, 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 they may have had some kids out of wedlock. And so let's put them, let's put them in a cave of darkness and just isolate them. And man puts us in the cave when they feel like God is done with us. But God puts us in the cave to say, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I still got an anointing for you. I still got a future for you. I still got a destiny for you. And when man starts believing in me, that is the beginning of me believing in you even more. Man, put him in a dark place and put a stone over him and say, don't ever open it again. He'll never have a ministry. He'll he'll never be used. She'll never sing with that gift that God has given her. She'll she'll never reach that destiny that she thought she could reach. She, She messed up. She is stigmatized by her affliction. She'll just lock the door away. Put the stone on the cave. God has abandoned her in right when everybody gave up on him for several days. They didn't see Jesus coming a few days late. They said, come forth. There's still something in you. (laughs) 
God will sometimes place you in a dark spot. Because that darkness is the only way he's going to get glory. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he said, he said, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The deep has a face, and the deep the depths face his darkness. Whenever God is ready to take you deeper in him. You're not hearing me right now. Whenever God's ready to take you to another level. Whenever God is ready to elevate you. The first face you will see is darkness. Darkness is the face of your next level. So if you've been in a dark spot right now, that means that you are closer to a resurrection than you realize. That means you are closer to a new level than you realize. Don't you be afraid of the darkness. That is just the face of what's on the other side. Come on, somebody. On the other side of darkness, a word came forth. and said, let there be light. Come on. There is light on the other side. There is power on the other side of that. How much shit? You say, people say, I want, I'm ready to go deeper in the Lord. The Lord's like, okay, go ahead, darkness. Because you have to encounter that before you reach that place, before I can trust you to handle properly the miracle. first face you'll encounter is darkness. And that's where they put them, in darkness. The Jews refer to darkness and the evening time. They refer to the evening time as the point of transition. The transition point to the next day. That's what, how Jews define the evening time. The transition point to the next day. When you're in darkness, that means you're in transition. When you're in darkness, that means you're in transition. You will never get till tomorrow until you first see evening. You're not hearing me. And, and his mercies are new every morning. So if I want new mercy, I must endure night to get new mercy. If I only see day, for six months, I'm still in the same day. In the same mercy. But when darkness comes, it transitions me into new mercy in a new day. I said, there's a new day coming after this. There's a new anointing coming after this. There's a new power coming after this. I wish weeping may endure for a night, right? But joy cometh in the morning. Uh, weeping may endure for a night. That's a time limit. But joy cometh continually comes in the morning. So if I survive the limit of Come on, you're not hearing me right now. It's I've survived the limits that have been placed on my darkness.
this. There is something that is continually coming on the other side that will make me thank God for my darkness. That will make me thank God for my darkness. They put him in a cave. They put him in the cave of darkness. I'm thankful that God wasn't intimidated by his darkness. I'm thankful that God is willing to visit me and even stay with me in my dark place. Matter of fact, Psalm says, the darkness is his secret place. I feel like preaching right now. You say, God, I want to know your secrets. He says, go ahead. Just settle in some darkness right now. I'm going to show you a side of me that nobody gets to get. I'm going to show you a side of me that nobody gets to experience. I'm going to show you a side of me that nobody... So the darkness is his secret place. That's where he sends you on those secret missions. That's where you get some secret battle plans and strategies. Am I, wave a hand if I'm helping you right now. I'm, I'm trying not to belabor anything, but I, I, I feel that I'm helping somebody in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Darkness is his secret place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God asked Job, Job, have the gates of death been opened up to thee? And he said, Job, hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? There's a door in the shadow of death. I said, there's a doorway even in the shadow of death. I said, there's a door into his presence even in the shadow of death. You cannot be hold, bond, bound or captive by the shadow of There's a door even in the shadow of death. That whenever you're ready to come out, he'll bring you out faster than you went out. And so they put him in the cave. They, they, they put him in the cave. Man gave up on him and they put him in the cave. And there was a stone on that cave. Uh, it's amazing that you never feel more isolated than when you're in a battle. I feel like you can't connect to anybody because it seems like everybody happy. Uh, it's almost like my, my affliction in, interrupts the flow of the service. Everybody's talking about we shall be dancing and we shall be shouting and everybody's smiling and, I, and here I am just weeping and crying because I'm battling right now and, and it's almost like I can't talk to nobody because everybody got their church face on acting like they're all perfect. Come on, somebody. <laughs> uh, everybody put their church face on. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm blessed of the Lord. I am highly favored. We got the church lingo. God has been good to me. But if you look behind the facade, there is a dark place that they're battling. Come on, somebody. Why don't we get some real folk up in here that says, you know what? I may be in a dark place, but I am not defined by this darkness because he can still come in the cave and pull something out of me that he might get glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. The people looking at me like, like, man, you still battling? <laughs> or, or they don't even want to hear about your struggle no more. <laughs> They're like, you know, you just stay in your cave. <laughs> we all happy out here. You tell them about your struggle, they cry the first time with you. 
They stay with you the second time you mention it. They love on you the third time you mention it. But when you start getting up into five, six times over three months, they're like, look, God's done with you. And so even in your worship, while you're clapping with everybody else, but you still feel alone. Because it's almost like the human tendency is to run from the darkness. Man runs from it, but God runs to it. And if he doesn't run to it, he, he stays in the same place until your eyes get adjusted to the darkness. And you just learn how to survive in the dark place. I can see a little bit. There's a little crack coming out of the side of that stone. and I, It might be light. I, I didn't see it before, but as I stayed in the darkness, I began to see every little speck of light be begin to venture from behind the stone that they placed on me. Sometimes I just stay there until my eyes get adjusted. Because even when I'm not going through nothing, it seems like I can always find darkness. There's people like that, you know. No matter how good something's happening, like, man, you got blessed financially. Yeah, but the kids are battling. Man, the kids are doing good. Yeah, but the marriage is having some little trouble. Man, the marriage is doing well, but yeah, my coworker's really getting on my nerves. It's like when you blessed, come on, somebody. Uh, sometimes our personality starts looking for spots of darkness. So God's like, okay, let me bring you into the darkness so I can readjust your mindset. And in darkness, instead of looking for darkness, because darkness all around you, you start getting adjusted to looking for light. Man, you're going through a lot of hell, but I know God's still with me, though. Your kids aren't doing too well. Well, I'm just glad they're breathing. I'm just glad they're breathing. I'm just glad they're still here. Hold on, but you've been battling, I know, but I'm still here. And if, if you realize how much hell I've been through, you would thank and praise God with me. Because despite all the battle, despite the cave, I'm still here. And I've learned to look for something positive in the midst of my affliction. Because I see, even in my hell, he is still keeping me in the battle. I wish somebody would give him a high praise right now. How about Tere Behea? Oh. Hey, mama, shit, hey, kataya. I got a word for you. The first people that put him away were the first people to see his miracle. You're not hearing me right now. The people that put the stone on him were the people that took the stone off of him. The people that put the grave clothes on him were the same people that took the grave clothes off of him. The same people that were committed to destroying him were the same people that watched God deliver him. Come on, somebody. What am I saying? God is going to let the people witness. You'll turn around. So Lazarus, when those grave clothes come off of you, don't you be bitter at the people that put you away. Don't you be bitter at the people that try to destroy you because I will use them as a witness of my glory and as a testimony. And the same people that hurt you in the cave are the same people that are helping you get out of the cave. Don't you get bitter at Uh, 
Palamo Hosere Kaya. Ho Shamahata. Hila Bohore Ataya. Hila Moko Sere Hetaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you had to go through the cave, Lazarus, huh? so you can sit with me as a testimony at the table huh? of what I can do with a vessel that survives hell huh? and doesn't get bitter, huh? survives hell huh? and doesn't get discouraged, huh? survives hell huh? and still has the stamina huh? to bless God with everything in them. He loves satire and say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, somebody. You're still here, Lazarus. They gave up on you. They tried to kill you. Don't waste your time getting bitter. You just sit at the table and eat and have a feast and the blessings of God. And now uh, Jesus is sitting. Everybody stand. You got to hear me right now. Uh, Jesus uh, is sitting at the table. Uh, and as Jesus is sitting at the table uh, with Lazarus as his testimony right next to him, uh, the Bible says uh, that the people that didn't know Jesus, uh, they didn't come to the table to see Jesus. Uh, the Bible says uh, they came to see Lazarus. Uh, but when they saw Lazarus uh, and his testimony, uh, the Bible says, says uh, that they believe in Jesus. Uh, when people see what you survive, uh, they're going to get a elevo sata. They're going to see Jesus uh, in a way that they never... Lazarus, huh? you went through it so I can get glory. Huh? You went through it because I'm trying to save your family. You went through it because I'm trying to save your kids. Huh? You went through it because I'm trying to save this community. You went through it, Lazarus, huh? that the glory of God might... He went through it, Lazarus, because that's the only way revival's coming. Revival's coming when they see the glory that manifested out of your trouble. I want you to throw your hands up in the air. Lift up those hands. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to open up your mouth. And I want you to pray that the light of God will come and breathe in that. Come on, lift up your voice. Have a Mahaya. Come on and lift up your voice. Hey, Lama Baba Bataya. He Lama Solo Lobo Condolo Hoya. He will not die in this cave. There's a glory that's coming out of this cave. You will not die in that cave. There's a glory that's coming out of that cave. You will not die in that hurt. There's a glory that's coming out of that hurt. You will not die in that depression. There is a glory that's coming out of that depression. I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. He I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to pray. You're coming out. You're coming out. You're coming out. You're coming out. Pray with the person next to you. And tell them in the Holy Ghost. You're coming out of this. You're coming out of this. You're coming out of this. You're coming. voice you're coming out of this you pray for them and tell them prophetically you're coming out of this you will not be defined by this cave you will be defined by the glory
Namo Hosere Kataya Ushala Mahata Oh Hallelujah Hamama Mama Kororo Hoshetaya Ushamamaha Ilamo I see the first glimpses of light I feel light beginning to penetrate the darkness. That's it. Keep praying. I want everyone from the front to the back to make your way to the front. I want everyone to come to the front. Move in as close as you can. This is your first step out of the cave. Come on. Step out of that pew and come to the front. Just keep on praying as you come forward. There's room up here. Keep on praying as you come forward. Shalom Akorobohoya. Come on, this is your first step out of the cave. This is the first step out of the darkness. This is the first step out of your dilemma. This is your first step. I said, come forward, move in as close as you can. I'll give you instructionism in a moment. But you come forward and just lift up your hands, reaching for God. I said, step out of that pew, come up front, and lift up both hands toward God right now. Oh, la 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 Hila mama Hala mahandele hosaya, hora mama mama korololo boho shanda la haya, hu shama mahataya. I feel somebody getting lifted out of the dark place right now. I feel somebody getting lifted up out of the cave right now. I hear the word of the Lord saying, "Come forth right now, come forth right now, come forth right now." Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Lift up those hands right now. I want you to close your eyes. Lift up those hands and close your eyes. You can see that dark place as your eyes are closed. I want you to see God's hand reaching into that dark place. And I want you to see God pulling you out. And as you see God pulling you out, you're going to feel to speak in other tongues. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost, when you lift up your hands and close your eyes, you're going to feel to want to speak some things you don't understand. You just speak it out. That is speaking in tongues. That is the light of God shining in a dark place right now. If you have the Holy Ghost, you just start speaking in tongues. And God's going to pull you. Lift up those hands. And I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. There is something that is sweeping over this place. That's the Holy Ghost on you right there. Come on, 
God said, keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Lay your hand on the person's shoulder nearby you right now and keep on praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep on praying in the Spirit. Put your hand on somebody near you and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. God is beginning to...